Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with some new watercolors to share today. They will be the new eight colors of Rosa watercolor. I reviewed Rosa a couple of years ago. I purchased the set of 12. It was like $16 on Amazon. It was 12 full pans and a cardboard box. They were fantastic. So then I saw that they had a set of 21 modern colors, and I love the colors that were in there. There were a few duplicates. So what I did was I took the colors I already had, I put them in this set with the 21 full pans, and I just, uh, any that were duplicates, I just took those out and left them wrapped and put them in with my tube watercolors for when I run out. Um, and then I did sneak a little half pan of a, just a more neutral pinky red in there. But um, really, really enjoyed these colors, and they, they usually live on my fun art desk upstairs, so that's why you don't see them in videos, but you do see them if you follow me on Instagram. Uh, you'll see them in like my World Watercolor Month posts and whatnot from last year and the year before. There were quite a few done with this set. Um, great quality for the price. Very, very nice Ukraine company. So they contacted me on Instagram, I think probably because that's where I tend to use them is Instagram because it's a lot of times I'm doing a monthly challenge or whatnot. They asked me if I'd like to try their new granulating colors demo. So this just came in the mail and this teal tin, very, very cute. And in it, there's a couple stickers, which I guess you could decorate your tins to make them stand out. Although this color is really nice, that will stand out pretty well. Um, you can use it to decorate things. I notice a lot of brands doing that nowadays, adding like stickers of their products in, like the Artfinity markers had some and Ohuhu stuff had some. So I think it's kind of, it's kind of fun. It's like a trend I'm seeing a lot with the uh, swag. And then we have 12 colors in here. So there's the magenta and cobalt teal, which I already have from the modern set. So I probably won't open that. And there's also a gold and silver, which um, are part of their 10 new colors. And I will open those and swatch them out. And then we've got the, um, then we've got the new granulating colors. And they also sent a dot, a couple dot cards. They sent the dot color, their old dot color, dot card. And let me know if you'd like me to swatch these out on camera. And I could do that. Um, so those are in here. I'll have to, they kind of stuck a little bit, but they're fine. So let me know if you'd like me to swatch those out and I will do a separate video for that. And then this is the dot card that has these colors in it, minus the magenta and the blue. So what I'm thinking though, is I will take these, I will unwrap them, not the blue and the magenta, cause I already have those unwrapped and I'll just save those for when I run out, but I will unwrap these and I'll stick these stickers on a piece of my watercolor paper that I always review my watercolors on with a black stripe and everything, and then we'll swatch these out. And there's also a brochure with uh, the printed swatches of all their colors. So um, it, the nice thing is there's light fastness information here, transparency or an opacity. There's also, if it's a new color, is that what that means? No, is that what that means? No, the natu natural pigment color. So if they're an N, they're made with natural pigments. If they're G, they're granulating. Um, some are natural pigments and granulating. So I guess a bunch of these are synthetics, but you can have synthetic. A lot of our paints are synthetic. It's not a big deal. So with that, there's all the pigment information here. That's nice. Um, I'm going to prepare my swatch sheet and then we will swatch the 10 new colors together. And you can let me know if you'd like me to swatch the dark car dot cards in another video, because I'm sure you need something to fall asleep to. So that's what that would be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. I stuck the stickers down and then I made a black line with a marker, waterproof marker, a uh, pro marker. And now we're going to add our paint and we're gonna make sure we have lots of water in there so we can coax that granulation out. This one is called magenta gray. And I didn't preact, I, pre I did put a drop of water. You know what, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see. Um, I did put a drop of water on the gold and silver, but not on the other color. I guess I could pop them back in the tin. And I took the, I'm gonna put these right in my storage with, and cause I already have that in another palette opened up. And this is kind of a specialty palette. I can't imagine I would be using this other than, um, I, I wouldn't do a whole painting with these, I don't think, because they are all just kind of like these um, muted tones. Um, I, I, Maybe I will, just for this review's sake, maybe I'll do like a, a painting with just these, but in general, how I use these types of colors is, um, I'll use them as accents because if you do a whole painting in granulating colors, then the granulation doesn't really stand out as being special. 
This paper I'm using is just some cellulose um, paper. I think it's Acuma Crafts. There, it's very similar to the stuff I, the Fabriano stuff I usually, um, I usually swatch colors on. So I thought it'd be pretty good for that. I don't like to use expensive paper for my swatching, but I, you know, when I'll do the the painting, I'll do it on good paper. But for the, these are some nice. Nice pretty reds. This one's called Maroon Brown. The previous color is Violet Black and the one before that was Magenta Gray. It's really hard to see what you have, so I'll have to do a little swatch for my for my palette. Now according to this old dot card, all of these colors except for the gold and silver are granulating. And I'm wondering if they put the gold and silver here just because it was a new color or if like there were some popular colors by Supervision that came out last year called Rock Plus Mica and they had like uh, like a dye, a granulating uh, pigment and mica in them so that the colors would split apart and then have a little bit of shimmer. To be honest, uh, I didn't really get the what all the fuss was about with those. I didn't find them to be all that exciting or useful but, um, but I have them in a palette with some granulating colors because I would just grab those when I want that sort of effect. This, uh, that color was Azure Green, by the way. That's pretty. Is that a single? I don't think um, any of these are single pigment colors. No, they're all mixes, which is pretty common with the granulating colors. Um, this next one is called Jade Green. PB28, which is a cobalt blue, PBK7, and PY42, which is yellow ochre. Not a lot of flow with these guys. I didn't remember. I, I don't think Rosa had a ton of flow in their other paints. Oh, that's a pretty, that's going to granulate well, though, I think. It must be the B, the PB28 that's granulating. That's got really aggressive granulation. That's going to be a good one. Look at that already. Without any work, look how much granulation we've got on that. That, look at that. That's nice. That's a heavily granulating color. That's definitely one to... One to watch, one to use. Golden Brown, which is Yellow Ochre and PBR7. Um, sometimes those colors granulate, sometimes they don't, hopefully. They've done something to make the... I love that green, though. That reminds me of... Um, it's not as uh, as fresh as Serpentine, but it kind of reminds me maybe of Cascade or Undersea Green. I don't have either of those colors, but it seems like I've seen those and they've looked similar. You have to let me know if you're a Daniel Smith aficionado if that looks like one of those two and which one. I have something I have nothing against Daniel Smith even though people think I have something against Daniel Smith. My only axe to grind is the fact that there's there wasn't pigment disclosure on the Primatech lines and they led people to believe it was all magical earth pigments when it wasn't. That's that's my axe that I have to grind with them. But I mean, I use Daniel Smith paints. I love the Daniel Smith sticks. I think they're a good value. Um, but I just had a problem with that. And you can have a problem with one aspect of a company and still like the quality of the products. I mean, I can anyway. I'm not, you know, there's a lot of many shades of gray out there, you know. Nobody's perfect. You can't look at any, well, maybe some little handmade brands, but in general, you can't look at any company and be like they're 100% saintly. No, it just doesn't work that way. And even with handmade brands, they're getting their pigments from somewhere and not necessarily, you know, they don't necessarily know everything that's going on there. That's nice. That's PBK7 and PY42. That's weird because I never know PBK7 to granulate all that much, but this is granulating quite well. I love that gray, cobalt gray. I never would have thought that would be a color that I would grab. This row right here, man, that, this is a, this is where you're getting the texture. This is going to be so good for painting rocks. All right, now let's see how the gold and silver are. I'm just going to shift that up a little bit so I don't have to zoom out. So this has been, I just added a couple drops right before I turned the camera back on. So that would have been about 10, uh, no, about seven, six or seven minutes ago. This is a lovely sparkly sheer gold. And let's see this guy. It's a lovely sparkly sheer pearly silver color. And I'm thinking that these colors, these two colors will be good for making those. Remember I told you that uh, like Supervision has a rock plus mica? 
I think those will be good for making fluorescent colors. So why don't we go get our trusty old Rosa palette and try some of those metallics. Ah, while we wait for those to dry. I am really loving the center row here and I'm definitely going to be able to recommend some of those. All right, let's do, let's do some mixing here. Ugh. Let's not be as awkward as we possibly can. Let's not be, <laughs> let's see, let's take uh, some cool, I'm going to have to put tape over these because they're going to lift up, but let's take um, some nice transparent colors and mix them in with the, uh, Let's do that magenta. Is that the magenta? No, that's a, that's matter red. Actually, that's not what I want. Let's do the magenta. This one also they sent me, but I already had it in this palette. Like I said, let's do that. Let's do like phthalo blue. I'm just thinking of what would be really good with a silvery pigment. Let's do some violet. All right. I'm just gonna add it right above there so it can drip down in so I don't have to like waste what's on my brush. Ooh, those mix really nicely. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that their metallics might be more for like mixing in because they're quite sheer. More for mixing in the colors. And that would make sense why they sent the uh why they sent those colors. You know what, I bet purple and gold would look really well, would look really nice together too. Yeah, that kind of gives you some of that effect. Now let's try, um, let's try one of these brighter colors with the gold. Let's try this green. This was the Azure Green. I'm betting that those will split up. I'm sorry, those will split apart and we'll get some interesting looks. Let's take this, uh, let's do some of this green. They're already granules beautifully. And do some of that with the gold and see what happens. We'll have to let that dry, but, uh, oh, let's let it slurp into that color too. Let's let them mix together. I think, yeah, look at how it's splitting apart with the purple. I think that's nice. I think that these uh, metallics are going to be good those sorts of effects. What if we just added some of those in too? Let them do their thing. I wonder if that's why they why they put those colors there. If they're like that, you know, let's do something like the Rock Plus Mica, but let's let people have their own control of it. And that was kind of my issue that I had with the Rock Plus Mica. Is the way I talk today, you think I have, a, have issues with everything. I don't have issues with everything, but um, you know, that, let's do that, that first red, that matter red with the gold. So I'm, I love letting them bleed together. Yeah, I think that mixing that gold and silver, they're very mixable, they're very sheer. It's almost like, I wouldn't even say that's silver, I would say that's a pearl and that's a gold. And like you could make your own colors to do kind of like spray mist effects to get those uh, really pretty. Let's do this color green with some gold. Yeah, um, because like if I shift this to, if I hold it to the light, you can definitely see the different colors. We'll have to let that dry and I'll have to come back. I don't want to dry it with the heat tool. I want to let this dry naturally. But um, yeah, I'm betting that maybe those that gold and silver is meant to mix with other things. I'm wondering if that color there, that reddish, that probably would go really nice with gold. Uh, that one right there, which I have my swatch backwards, so. Oh, just look at it, look at it on the pan. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm betting that's what that's for. Let's put a little swatch of that there. Yeah, that's nice. I'm thinking that's probably what it's for. Let's look so far. We'll let these dry. I'll come back probably tomorrow or something when I come back because I'm going to let this dry naturally. But yeah, if you look at how these colors, we use that color, which I didn't think was really that impressive so far on its own, but mixed in with that gold, I, that, the gold is really separating out and giving us a beautiful texture. Um, and it is with that, it is with that red there too, that I really couldn't see the granulation all that much there. That's a PB, 
R25, a benzenodite brown with PV23, which is dioxazine violet, which, I mean, those the violet doesn't granulate, and the brown sometimes granulates. It's not that impressive, honestly, on its own. But when I have it there with the gold, I can see the gold kind of splitting out, and that's giving it a really nice effect. Um, that one here, the PV19, was quinn violet, PBK7, and PR108. So that's got a coal, uh, cadmium red, uh, just your typical iron oxide brown, and a, you know quinacridone violet. I don't find that's doing all that much. But maybe I'll see a little more texture as that big puddle dries. And then this one here, the magenta gray, which is PR122 and PG17. So it's a viridian, viridian? Is it viridian or uh, chrome oxide? Why? Do, I think it's chrome oxide. Uh, yeah, it's chrome oxide. So it's a, the chrome oxide green, which I think is just kind of a dull color. It's, not, it's like my least favorite color in the entire world mixed with um, PR122, so I'm not surprised it has such a flat finish to it. Uh, but yeah, we'll know when it dries. This row in the center though, that is stunning. I love that. Um, so these colors here, we've got Jade Green, we've got, which is uh, PB28, Cobalt Blue, PBK7, which I never knew PBK7 to really granulate all that much, but here we are, and PY42, which is yellow ochre. Here we've got that yellow ochre plus PBR7. Uh, pigment brown 7, that's weird. That I Generally, those don't granulate that aggressively, but here we are, that's granulating. This, um, and that was called golden brown. This is, and I'll have all this in the video description, guys, so that will be probably health, more helpful for you. Um, this says uh, PR108, which is cadmium red, and PB28, which is cobalt blue, and then PBK7. This is really nice. I love that texture there. And these all seem to be light fast colors, so we shouldn't have any fading issues. Generally, you don't with the sedimentary colors. They tend to be pretty reliable. Uh, they tend to be either um, or, uh, inorganics, like rocks from the earth, metals from the earth, or synthetic inorganics, which are just them recreated with chemicals in the lab. Um, and then we've got PBK7 and PY42, so it's another black and yellow ochre again. That black is so granulating, I'm really surprised. I'm going to have to look up PBK7 a little bit more because I've apparently never thought of that as a granulating color, and I might just, maybe it's a color I don't see all that often. Seems like it's not. Seems like it's one I come across all the time. But I love the texture on those. Then the gold and silver, wonderful mixers. I love how they're mixing in with these, and now you can kind of see them dry and the colors splitting apart. So I could see why they would include that with these specialty colors, not as something to like be on their own as standalone, but something to mix in with what you already have, which is great. If you can add something that makes what you already have more valuable and more versatile, then that's a, that's a great thing in my book. So yeah, we're going to let it dry. I'm going to figure out something to paint with these, and then we'll do that. Or I'll maybe do the painting tutorial or painting separately and then come back with my final thoughts on this. But um, really loving these four. And Rosa offers their colors open stock or in sets. I did not see a set with these new colors. I think that might have just been sent to me. Um, kind of just put together randomly. But um, they do have like a mono pigment set. I think they might even have... They have a couple sets like this. Or the the um, 12 full pans. There's like an urban, a mono pigment, so it's all single pigment colors, which I think would be a really good option if you're looking to pick up one Rosa set. And then there's it's either landscape or florals or something, I don't know. But they have quite a few different sets floating around Amazon for a pretty good price. So yeah, uh, so let's let this dry and we'll come back and go on from there. All right, it's been probably about a week, maybe a little bit more since, oh gosh, it's been way more than a week. It's been a while since we first, since we first, started this journey of the brand new Rosa Gallery colors, the brand new set of 10 new colors, not a set, it's just 10 new colors, focusing on the granulating colors. And I've been using them, I've been enjoying them, but one thing that just is kind of uh, getting stuck in my head is that PBK7, I never knew that color to be a granulator, and that PBK7 is in this color, this color, this, is it in, it's not in that color. Uh, PBR7 is in that color. That's Mars Brown, I believe. Um, but that's PBK7 there, there, there. Uh, there. And, okay, so yeah, so those. So these, all except for, 
not that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, say it has PBK7. And none of the other colors there are all that granulating. And I'm really seeing this black specks granulate out. So I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I've missed something. Maybe I just never realized that PBK7 granulates and that's pigment black seven. So I decided to go through my black and gray stash of watercolors, which honestly, I rarely use black or gray. So I'm like, well, I'm not that familiar with those colors. So maybe I'm wrong. So I decided to swatch out the colors that I have that contained PBK7. And I really didn't see too much granulation happening in these colors. So this one is Mission Gold's Old Ivory Black that has PBK7. And they also have an Ivory Black that's got a PBK9. Then we've got the Vintage Cotman Payne's Gray, which is a gorgeous color. And it says it's PBK7 and PB15. And I see a little granulation here, but honestly, that looks like ultramarine blue. I'm really surprised. And I double checked and it says PB15. So I don't know. That's really weird. Um, but anyway, it's a beautiful color, but it doesn't, that doesn't look like a PB15. And, and I, there's some granulation in there, but it looks like the blue is a granulating pigment. Then I've got this one was dry in the tube, so I didn't really get that accurate of a swatch. And I've got clumps because I had to like get the kind of uh, get the paint off from around the neck to get some to swatch with. And this was a PBK7, but that's kind of inconclusive. It does look like there's a little granulation in there, but it's really hard to say because the paint was dry in there and I really had to work to get some out. And I think I was getting some crusty crinkles out of there. So that wasn't absolutely perfect. This Murray's Master watercolor that looks a lot like the Cotman Payne's Gray. This is, um, this is the Murray's Masters Payne's Gray. This has PB29 and PBK7. There's a little bit of granulation, but again, it seems like it's coming from the blue. This is Lamp Black from Renaissance, PBK7. I didn't, it's very smooth and warm. I don't see any granulation there. This is Sennelier's Payne's Gray, and this is um, a Prussian Blue, PB. Uh, PB15 and PBK7, so it's it's supposed to be the same color, the same mix as those two, but I really think that has an ultramarine blue in it and the, that label is wrong. Um, and I've said that I'm the queen of the world and I know everything, but just judging from what I've just learned in my experiences with paint and stuff, but this is very smooth. I would expect the PB15 to be completely smooth and the PBK7 seems smooth. And there was a really big puddle in here, so I do have a cauliflower. It is extremely humid. Um, it's been raining every day. It's just very humid right now. So, and I'm, and I work in a basement, so, um, we have some cauliflower happening. Cauliflower, and I didn't tape my paper down. I was just kind of doing quick swatches, swatches. Then I've got, uh, coal black, and this is, uh, from Paul Rubens, PBK7. We've got this, um, uh, mineral gray, which does seem to have a little bit of texture. It's also had some binder separation and I've got some glossy bits. Uh, but it does seem to have a little texture in there. And this is um, PG-17, PW-6, PG-17, and PBK-7. PG-17 uh, granulates. So that's where the granulation might be coming. Or maybe it's coming from the black. And But uh, it doesn't really look like it is. I don't know. And it could just be thickness from the binder. Here we have White Knight's uh, Lamp Black, PBK-7. Not a lot of texture. I wouldn't call any of that granulation. That's a very kind of pasty, weird paint. I don't really like white nights and tubes very much. Then I've got Coors Payne's Gray, which is um, PB15, PBK7, and PB19. And again, very smooth, except for the cauliflowers because this is cellulose paper, a very humid day, took forever to dry, and there were some puddles. So I'm not really seeing any granulation texture in these. So then I thought, well, maybe they mislabeled it and, and it's not PB7, it's either PBK8 I mean, it's not PBK7, it's either PBK8 or PBK11. It looks like PBK11, the texture. Am I boring you? Are you asleep? Um, if you're asleep, I'll try to keep my voice down so that you can keep drifting off to dreamland and dream about watercolors. So let me move this out of the way. I just want to keep all those paint tubes there so I know what, what each one, one of the swatches were. So then I took this uh, charcoal watercolor from Renaissance. This is really, really neat stuff. This is the texture you get from that, kind of more of a speckled texture. And it actually has like, you can run your finger on it and feel the texture of the charcoal. And this is PBK8. Um, I think it's like a burnt, like a, just like a burnt vine charcoal type. And uh, it's got very little sheen. It's a beautiful texture, good mixing color. This is a really nice one to have in here. And you get a honkin tube of it. I think it's around 20 bucks, um, but it's a big tube. Um, so, I mean, that texture isn't exactly like the texture that I was seeing in 
these paints. It's This is more of a speckle where those are a little bit more of a scaly texture. See how it kind of looks like lizard, like um, you know, alligator, like an alligator purse there. It's got that texture. So then I thought, well, let me swatch out PBK 11 because really I feel like the ones with this PBK 7 look like the texture of a PBK 11, especially this green one here. And that's really what I think the pigment is. I did email Rosa and I will update in the video description if I hear back from them. Basically, I just asked, is there any chance that the notation PBK7 could be wrong on the uh, colors that it's used in because I'm not seeing any of that granulation here. And of course, out of these new eight granulating colors, I'm really only seeing granulation in these four, but it does seem to be more of a texture like that. This is my favorite granulating black. It's a uh, Turner. It's super cheap. Turner's Mars Black. You can get it at Jerry's Autorama for about I don't know, six bucks a tube for 15 ml tube. I do feel like their tubes aren't quite as full or something. It doesn't seem like I'm getting as much in a tube of Turner as I would a tube of Daniel Smith or um, any other brand, but I still, I think it's a great, a great deal. Um, but yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous texture there and a very similar texture. So that's what I'm thinking is probably happening here. It was probably just a mislabeling. I don't think anyone would mislabel, mislabel it on purpose because everyone's looking for PB, not everybody. I mean, I'm being hyperbolic, but lots of people that want granulation are looking for PBK 11 because they know that color granulates. It's also magnetic. So I could have run a magnet, um, behind those colors while they were wet, but, uh, but I didn't, I didn't think of it. Um, I guess we could do, we could do that. Do I have a magnet? All right, hold the phone. I'm going to find a magnet. Honestly, the things I do for you guys. So I've got a magnet here. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Um, let's get, this is the Rosa, the Rosa paints. I'm going to get a nice juicy brush. Get a cup of water here. Good thing I just changed my water. And let's, let's get us a nice juicy swatch. Let's do, um... Oh, you know, let's do the three that have the... The PBK11 that have that really strong granulation. I mean, PBK7. Oh, I'm going to confuse myself before we're done here. Okay. Okay, so let's just get it nice and gooey. All right, so it's nice and wet. Let's just see if, oh, we're seeing the granulation already. That's lovely. All right, let's see if the magnet can affect this. <gasps> Look, guys, we have deduced it. We figured it out. I feel like Dora the Explorer here. We did it! We did it! We did it! Hooray! Sorry if you're sleeping. It's like one of those, um, you know, those those toys we had when we were kids and you would have like the iron shavings and you'd put like a mustache on the person. Look at that! Oh, okay, so now what we can do... Where's my little... Where's my little scraps? Now we'll try PBK7 and we'll try PBK11 and I'll show you the difference and we just figured it out. Oh my word, why am I not a forensic person? I could figure out blood spatter. <laughs> That's too morbid for me. That's why. All right, so I need a pen. Do I have a pen? Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Let's do P B K 11 P B K seven. All right, I feel like I'm doing algebra. So what I'm going to do here is let's take something that's this is, let's do something that's just a straight PBK7. This guy right here, this is Mission Gold's Ivory Black PBK7. We're going to put that over here, just a smidgen. And then we're going to do PBK11. We'll do the Mars Black from Turner. We'll put a little smidgen over here. I feel like I'm a magician. There's nothing up my sleeve. Say PBK7, uh, PBK11 here, PBK7 there. And we'll do the magnet test to both of them, and then I think we'll be able to tell uh, what the pigment is on those rows of paints. And then we'll be so smart. Okay. Oh, I love this color. It's gorge. Isn't it just gorge? Look at it. Oh, so beautiful. And then PBK7. PBK7 
PBK7. This reminds me a lot of PBK9. It's kind of inky and um, solid. Okay, now what we're going to do is grab our magnet. I might need to put a little bit more on there, but yeah, I think we'll do a little bit more so it's a little bit more equal. Where is it? Am I on screen? I feel like I need to zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I will say that the, the um, your more granulating colors, I think because they're sedimentary, they need more, they need more binding. That, that's why they can be kind of hard to rewet sometimes. Um, and then so a lot of times they have a lot of extra humectant like a, a honey or glycerin to help them to be a little easier to rewet. So there's like less pigment it seems like. And of course you want to use a lot of color when you're going after this effect. So I do feel like you run through those types of colors, those granulating colors a little quicker. All right, so here we go with our PBK11. So you can move that around a little bit. We're making a little, you can see, you can see where the magnet, can you see that? Oh, isn't that cool? Again, we're going to do it on the PBK7 and there's no effect. I'm touching this to the back, see? No tricks, only treats, nothing. But over here, you can see where the magnet is. You see that? Over here, you can't see where the magnet is. So that's exciting. So it must be, wouldn't you say? It must be, look at it, it's just dragging. You can really see it here, I think, because it's pulling those um, those black pigments out. That's, that's, okay, it, there's gotta be, I think it's gotta be PBK11. Not that it takes away from the paint, but um, I don't, actually know if you can buy these paints in America. Maybe they haven't hit mass release yet. And if there is an error on their labels, then maybe I just save them. I've probably just been a big pain in their rear end, honestly. But um, okay, so great. So I think we we solved the mystery. It's not PBK. So I don't think it's PBK seven. I think it's PBK 11 in those things. Oh, I feel so smart. All right. So the other mystery that I wanted to get, the, get to the bottom of is that um, I'm not seeing very much granulation in these first four colors, and they are supposed to be granulating. And so I thought, well, I have hard water. Generally, hard water will make things granulate a little bit more, I've heard. But then again, often when I use salt water, which does soften the water, I'll get more granulation. So I decided to do a couple experiments. The first experiment I did was I got some gran my granulation medium from um, from Windsor Newton, and I added it to the paint. So basically I put a big uh, blob of granulation medium in, then I added my paint from the pans here, and those four that had granulated well, they still granulated well. Here you can see them side by side. See, we're still getting a good granulation. I think the granulation medium did make it break up even more. I think the cobalt gray did better without the granulation medium, but the others were either the same or better. And I was able to get a little granulation using granulation medium. So you can see them kind of like pulling apart there, the brown and the, um, oh, the kind of the, the, the kind of browner color pulling away from the, the pinker color. Although it's green, it's like a PG-17. That's a, I think that's chrome oxide green and um, PR-122 which is kind of like a rosy color. So you can kind of see a little bit of a pulling away and a little scaly effect there. Um, here we have the PBK7, which I think is PBK11. Look, you can really see the, that black pull out here with the granulation medium where it was really hard to see anything there. This one here, which is a PBR25, which is like a benzenodite, benzenodite brown and PB23, which is dioxazine violet. Don't really see much of the dioxazine violet, honestly. Um, but here you can kind of see the brown pull out a little bit there. Um, the thing I don't like about the granulation medium though is that it does give you more texture, but it gives you kind of like a sandy texture and not that pretty granulation that almost has a little bit of um, like alligator skin appearance to it. And then here I was able to get a little bit of granulation on this mix, which is the uh, PB15, 3, and PG17. PG, I'm thinking PG-17 is chrome oxide green and PG-18 is viridian. Am I wrong? Hold on. Yes, I was right. Uh, uh, PG-17 is chrome oxide green and then this has uh, PB-15 so it's got that uh, phthalo blue and chrome oxide green to give it that, that cloudy teal color. Um, 
And yeah, I really wasn't seeing the granulation here, but I don't think chrome oxide green granulates all that much, to be honest. Um, but I was getting a little bit more with the granulation medium. So this is a chrome oxide green in PR122. So it just kind of browns it down, browns down the pink a little bit. So yeah, just not, not that much. It got a little bit of like a brown granulation, must be where the green and pink were mixing. But I just don't think those four are that impressive. I think you could easily mix those colors with things you have on your palette. The level of granulation isn't enough, I think, to warrant those if you want them for the granulation effect. But I do think these four are really good. So the other thing I thought I would try was salt water because often I'll get really good results with salt water. And so that's what I did here. And like I said, it was really wet here and the salt water took longer to dry, which I thought was a little surprising. Maybe I used more. That could be because, you know, salt water's cheap and the granulation medium's kind of expensive. So I might've got all crazy with salt water. So I did have some puddles. Um, the salt water, I mean, I don't know, maybe made it a little bit more granular, not in that cobalt. I find that the, this cobalt gray is better on its own than mixed with anything. Cause that just kind of got a weird, texture kind of looks like a sinkhole or something or like a like if you see like a rock that's been worn away by the sea it's kind of a neat effect and then in the other the other ones um I don't know maybe a little bit more granulation in that pink with the salt water maybe a little bit more in the green don't really think it added a benefit I don't think I would bother I don't think it really adds that much of a benefit there but um but yeah, so, so those were the two, the, the several experiments I wanted to do before I gave my final thoughts on this. And I want to show you some artwork too. So um, I have a tutorial for this up on my channel right now. This is a landscape. And of course, if you don't have the Rosa colors, you can use whatever you want. But I got beautiful granulation in the sky here. I'm hoping that shows up on camera. Um, if not, I do have a still photos on my Instagram that shows you the detail of this beautiful texture from the cobalt gray. I think... The cobalt gray is my favorite color. Oh, the cobalt gray and the jade green. Those two are my favorite. I also really like the golden brown. I would say these three absolutely worth the money, worth buying. And rosa paints are pretty affordable. So I'm not saying like if you want to have to fling and get one of these other colors, they're not going to break the bank. Um, I think you would be better off to just get a straight PBK 11. Uh, rather than getting this mix here and then just mixing it with what you want. One of the reasons I like Turner's PBK 11 is that it's very, it's, it's very cool toned. So I think you could mix it with more options. The Renaissance PBK 11 is more warm toned. So, or you could even use a Mars Brown if you want a more warm toned granulator. But I just love how crisp and the, the contrast you get when you have such a cool to tone black there. So that's what I would do in place of getting that, which does, I mean, that's got that yellowy green undertone because of the yellow ochre that's in there. Um, but these three, I think they're so unique. This is so nice in clouds. That's what I did the clouds with. And I thought that was just so lovely. And I used that uh, jade green in the foliage here to get the texture. And I thought that was super effective. So yeah, I would say these three, that's number 766, 7, 761 and 768 when they're available. Um, generally, I've seen shops on Etsy that sell individual pans of Rosa watercolors and also Amazon. There's a Rosa shop on Amazon that sells individual pans. Um, I think they're cheaper on Etsy though. So obviously you want to shop around, especially if you're going to buy a bunch, you want to uh, make sure you get, you know, you get the best price. I think it might even be the same seller that's on Amazon as, as on Etsy, but, um, but yeah. So that was a painting I did. I really enjoyed using them. They were a lot of fun. And then I also wanted to see some more combinations with those colors in the palette because I really wanted to figure out what was what was going on with those other four colors. I wanted to figure out a way to make them useful. And so I bought this stencil. Let me show you. I got this at, um, as you know, I'm from Maine. You probably know that. Uh, I was in Bahaba. <laughs> that's how that's how the locals say it. I was in Bar Harbor, and which is a tourist trap. And um, it's where Acadia National Park is, that, that area. Oops, I got some paint on that to wash off. But anyway, I can do that later. Uh, I bought this stencil. I thought it was really kind of kitschy and uh, and just totally meta. You know, I'm like, I want to make a bunch of lobster things and put them in my house and be completely ironic. Um, but anyway, this was kind of small to do cushions. And I never used the stencil. I got it a couple of years ago. Then I thought, I wonder if this would fit on a greeting card. This is just a 5 by 7 uh, Strathmore greeting card or Canson or Strathmore. I'm not sure. Uh, just cellulose. And I'm like, oh, why don't I just trace this with like an ink tense, or, uh, not ink tense, a graphite pencil and then um, paint it. And that's what I did. And I used the, uh, I used that green color that 
it wasn't really granulating on its own and I added it with the, a little bit of the golden brown, a little bit of the jade green. And I mean, they do granulate well together. As you can see, it's mostly the black that, that's getting pulled out there um, and giving us the texture, but it is a way to use those other colors if you want to have them all. Uh, I know a lot of us like to have every color that a line puts out, especially if it's not a really expensive line. Um, I don't think I have every color in anything. I think I do in Renaissance actually, because they generously sent me those, but. Um, so I did that with that green, see what that green would do. I think it's a pretty color, honestly, but, um, and I usually don't like chrome oxide green because it's so soupy, but with that phthalo blue, it's actually really pretty, but so easy to mix. You know, you got chrome oxide green, you got phthalo blue, you can do this. You don't need that, that pan. But if you like to have those convenience mixes because they spark some inspiration, then hey, it's your money, it's your life. I want you to be happy with your paint. So that's why I'm trying to give you all the information that you might need. This one I took, um, I think it took, did I do both of those? I, I think I might have, no, I think I just did, I think I just did this one, this uh, maroon brown and the golden brown. I think just those two. I, add, I might have added a little bit of the carbon black, but I don't know. I'm thinking it's mostly those two and it got that, got a pretty, um, a pretty effect in here. Actually, no, I must add the carbon black because there's no black in that. That's this PBR7, that's a pigment brown seven. That's Mars brown. Um, so those three, they, I think they looked really well. This time I actually just sprayed water over the stencil and then lifted it up and then just started dabbing my color and letting it pool where the water had gone through the stencil. I'm like, why did I do that earlier? That's way easier. Um, and then for this one here, I did this, these two colors and then some of the cobalt gray. I might have put a little bit of that in there, but that was very flat. I feel like those colors are almost, I'm looking at my line, they're a little opaque, they're not bad, but they definitely have a little bit of a soupy opa opacity to it, kind of like the chrome oxide green, and I think the reason I'm not as keen on these three colors is the texture, weight, opacity, and body of them is very similar to straight chrome oxide green, and that is literally, my least favorite pigment, P PG17 is my least favorite watercolor pigment. It's just so soupy and flat looking. I don't like it. In mixes though, it's all right. I forced myself to do a couple paintings on Monsteria Leaves a few years ago on my YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, I forced myself to use that color because I'm like, I want to love this color because I have it. And I just, I don't. Um, and then I did this one on cotton paper. These are cellulose. I did this one on cotton paper and I used the, um, the green, the black and the maroon. And um, I think that was the maroon, right? No, violet black. I used this violet black, the um, the azure green, and the carbon black. And then I, I like the way this turned out. I like the granulation of it. It was really pretty on the cotton paper. Um, but again, I think you could just have a tube of Mars black and mix it with stuff you already have. I don't, I think that the three winners of this set are the ones I mentioned, and uh, I think they're worth, those Those three are definitely worth picking up. The gold and the silver, we didn't really get into the gold and the silver too much. Um, I typically don't use gold and silver paint that, that much, but I find that they've mixed really well with other colors, and if you want to just get a little, and I like how they do kind of separate away from some of your brighter, more transparent colors. If you wanted to get like that rock plus mica look that's popular with the company supervision, or you want a metallic watercolor without having to have all the metallics to deal with, you just want something easy. I do like those two pans of color because they're sheer enough and they're glittery enough that they still carry the metallic and sparkly essence of your standard transparent watercolors without having to have a bunch of colors. So I do like that. I feel like that whatever they're using for mica in there is easily coated by your other transparent colors and it just, it gives you a beautiful effect. So I am, I am, I am glass half full on those colors, glass half full on these, um, glass half empty on those, but honestly do what you want to do. I mean, there's a little bit of granulation in there. I'm just not really impressed with those four. And I feel like I've tried I haven't tried every granulating watercolor by now, but I've tried a lot and it, the bar is pretty high for me. And I do feel like those really meet the bar. Now, was there anything else that I wanted to mention? Okay, yes, there is one more thing I want to mention and it may be a little anecdotal. So, I mean, this, my, my testing is not scientific, it's artistic. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. I'm gonna, you know what, strike that. I'm gonna bring in my Rosa watercolor palette, my bigger palette here. And um, I have one that color there is not a rosa color because I needed a like kind of a, I needed a, a more neutral, slightly cool pink, but wasn't like as, as maroon as magenta. 
The thing with rose colors, they're an exceptional value. You can get a set of you can get a set of 12 full pans for about $30 on Amazon. You can get a set of 24 full pans for it used to be even less than that. You could get a set of 24 full pans in a box for like oh, 25, 30 bucks. So it's really, really affordable, affordable paint. The downside, and I think it's the only downside of this line, is that I find that I do go through it faster than I would the an equivalent other brand in a like a full pan. So like you can look, I don't know if it will show up on camera. Can you see this? I'm going to put my finger in this pan. It's going to be sticky, but like, can you see my fingers going into the pan? Like I've worked a divot of that. Now granted, I did have this on my fun the desk last summer, so I did use it quite a bit, but it still, it did feel like I was, I was um, wearing down the colors like yellow ochre, the olive green, the hooker's green, the uh, the ultramarine blue, the cobalt teal. I felt like I was kind of weird. They were being used up a little quicker than some other brands. The reason for this, I think, is that you don't need to pre-activate these colors. They are ready to go with a wet brush. You don't want to spray them or they could get a little bit soupy. Um, I think they have extra humectant, like extra glycerin or extra honey. I don't know if they use honey in their paints, but they do kind of feel like they do. They're very sticky. So they get used up a little quicker. And then when you when you pair that with a granulating color that's got even maybe even more humectant because of the sedimentary colors tend to be really hard to re-wet. So they add a little extra to make it easier on your brushes. Like I'm seeing divots in these already and I've just done the work that I showed you today. And I didn't use any one color, a huge exorbitant amount to really show a dent, I think, in the paint yet. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, you are gonna, I, I do feel like these colors wear down a little bit quicker, but that is the only con I have with this, with these paints, honestly. Um, choose colors you like, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. They do have a new mono pigmented set, so if you're looking for the standard colors, but you want single pigments, they get a set of 12 on Amazon in a tin, like a tin like this, and that's how the pans are arranged. There's 12 of them, and that's around 31, I think, $31. So it's definitely an affordable brand to try. If you've never tried them before, I'd recommend it. Um, these colors, I don't know, They re these four remind me, of, actually these three in particular, remind me a lot of the, of the Schmincke super granulating color, and I have some dried down that I've been using, and these do re-wet better. I will say these re-wet better than any other of the super granulating colors I've used from any other brands. Um, so I say yeah, I say I say yes, I say yes on these if you if you want that effect. Um, those aren't my favorite colors, but if you like them, uh, you know that's totally up to you. The brand as a whole, I am I am a fan of. And just complete disclosure, the Rosa Company contacted me and sent me these ten new colors for review purposes. I did not pay for them. These were sent for free. These paints here in this palette, I did pay for. I bought the set of 12 in a cardboard box and I paid like $16 for it and I did a review on them. I like them so much, I bought the modern set of 21 and I think I paid around 45 for that and it came in this tin and then I just put my ones from the box in here and just took any duplicate kit colors and left them wrapped up and put them in my storage um, for when, you know, like when the ultramarine runs out, I'll have another ultramarine to pop in there. So yeah, I would, I, Give them, give them the same review, paying for them or not paying for them. Um, I think they're great. Uh, just keep in mind they do seem to wear down a little quicker and they're very sticky. So if you live in a humid environment, it's probably not gonna be the best paint for you because if you travel with it, they and you have the palette on the side, I really think you have the risk of them kind of slurping out of their pans and making a mess or even just like sticking to your brush and just, um, if you're in a real humid environment, probably not for you, but otherwise, I say you, they're really tough to beat. And if you want to support a Ukrainian business, which I know a lot of people do, then hey, all the better, all the better, right? And that concludes this review. I think I've been pretty thorough with it. I'll bring the swatches out one more time so you can have a look. I do like their tins too, like this tin, nice and sturdy. This tin is also nice and sturdy. Cute colors, I like it. Screen, is it screen printed? It's painted on there. I don't know how they got it on there, but I don't even feel any any ridges on there. But yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Just um, I would I would get these three. I, I found these to be very useful in mixing with the, the 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 regular colors that I did here. So I used the colors from the regular Rosa set and mixed them in. And I found these colors mixed really well with other colors, and you could get the granulating effects 
without having to have all granulating colors. And really you want to get paints that are going to make your, your other colors more useful, not duplicate stuff you already have. So if you don't have granulating colors, and you want to try some, why not? Hopefully they'll be more widely available by the time you see this review. Um, but if not, you just keep your eyes open for them. And that's all I have for you for today. Let me know if you'd like me to see me swatch all the dot cards they sent me, because that might be something good to fall asleep to. I have no idea. Uh, and until next time, happy crafting. Please give me a thumbs up before you go, and we'll see you next time. Bye.